welcome to the uh, medi classes postgraduate lecture series we'll be focusing today on a very important uh, although a rare but complicated topic of hypercalcemia we had this 3 year old boy who presented with bone pain and had found to have a high level of calcium with a phosphorus was on the normal level now when i discuss about the pathophysiology we'll understand that calcium and phosphorus both of them we have to assess in a proper fashion to achieve a right diagnosis in that perspective now on evaluation now first step you always look at is the pth level now there the pth level was low which was in a way indicated by the phosphorus level which was normal because if your pth is high you expect the phosphorus level to be on the lower side so this was a pth independent form of hypercalcemia the vitamin d level was found to be normal and calcitriol level was also normal excluding a vitamin d form so often we consider okay when you have hypercalcemia you either have a pth or a vitamin d related cause both these causes have been excluded in this scenario so what we are looking at is a rare scenario and what was found that there was a lytic lesion which was present in this scenario which resulted in the diagnosis of a lymphoreticular malignancy leukemia so hypercalcemia though usually endocrine may also have significant component of other disorders which we have to be aware about and that's why we need to be cautious about so over the next hour or so we are going to focus about the practical aspects of pathophysiology of hypercalcemia evaluation management and case based assessment all of you are welcome to go to our website learning.grossociety.in which has got a lot of resources with regards to pediatric endocrinology including a lot of training opportunities which are there we have got a youtube channel which has got a lot of information along with validated courses on different aspects of pediatric endocrinology including fellowship programs and the postgraduate programs which are available we do frequent uh, grand rounds along with the approaches and postgraduate lecture series which we are doing today there are publications and mobile applications which can be used for day to day care a 2 year old a girl child who has apparently asymptomatic and having a high serum calcium of total calcium of 13.6 mg per dl so what would be the next best step in this case so what do you think should be done in this girl who has got a 2 day old girl with high serum calcium so people have started answering also so i think we can see what people have written so uh so if anybody would like to put the answer there we will like to have the inputs so the first thing of course uh, dr alapan what you are wanting to look at in that perspective is is the to... ionic level of the calcium we should check whether the ionic uh, level of the calcium is normal or not in this case it is almost uh, normal in that scenario so the main factor as sir has already described that uh, it is the ionic calcium which is responsible for the all the uh, uh, action Once of the so calcium you have to look uh, at the albumin ionic. level which will give you the diagnosis Diag so this was a pseudo hyper calcium. calcemia which was there so again always check for the specific level do not worry about the level so all of you are requested to put your answers on the q and a box next question a 3 day old boy again a asymptomatic child with no uh, similar any kind of symptoms and uh, here we have done a ionic calcium which shows a uh, higher level of 1.79 um, with a higher phosphorus and pth level so what would be the next step in this uh, scenario so in this case what you are seeing here is that your calcium is high and your pth is inappropriately high or normal more than 20 we said is high so what will be the next step in this scenario anybody would like to volunteer okay carry forward uh, so we have to check uh, for the maternal ca calcium level uh, which was uh, low in this setting causing this hyperparathyroidism causing this hyper uh, yeah so dr narendra has mentioned about parental levels that's very good and dr bharani is talking about urinary calcium so yes both are relevant we should look at the urinary calcium and we should also look at the parental level so mother's calcium was on the lower side so it's like the opposite of infant or diabetic mother where mother sugars are high baby's glucose becomes low here mother's calcium is low and because of the response you have got hypercalcemia in the baby so this is so something this to is look at this is hypercalcemia of uh, in, uh, newborn and yeah. is uh, ideally do not require any treatment so the next case of five day old uh, uh, boy has uh, presented with irritability with two episodes of uh, tonic seizure Uh, he had multiple episodes of uh, skin nodules, a violaceous skin nodules, 
So I think you have given the diagnosis here. Yes. So you have got a newborn in the setting of hypercalcemia presentation who has got these nodules. So what are the diagnoses? I think quickly people can write up in the Q&A. This is something which we have discussed. So this is fat necrosis. Dr. Narendra is absolutely right. And Dr. Bharani is also uh, mentioning, I think, the same uh, fat necrosis. So this is a classical scenario. So if you have somebody who has birth asphyxia, have these violaceous skin nodules, think of fat necrosis as a possibility. He has a high serum uh, calcium level and uh, phosphorus level. And so, so very importantly, the phosphorus level is not low. It is on the higher side, which means that the body is producing too much vitamin D, which is retaining the calcium. And again, the treatment here would be? The steroid would be the uh, treatment. A course of, of steroids steroid. for two to six weeks will be what we are looking at. Okay. So next, a 12-day-old girl child, uh, he has again presented with irritability and the features of dehydration. And here also the calcium level is high, 18 milligram per DL and a high PTH level. So this case is different from the other two cases that you discussed about. Three cases is looks like very, very severe level of hypercalcemia and the PTH level is also on the higher side. side. Yeah. And the parents also give the history of mild hypercalcemia, both the parents. So I think the diagnosis is done here. What will be the diagnosis? People will be able to answer. I think there are a few answers which have come up. So Dr. Shubha has also mentioned subcutaneous fat necrosis. Fat necrosis for this case, primary hyperparathyroidism. Uh, Dr. Uh, Panali Raman is talking about, yes, it's primary hyperparathyroidism and more specifically, as Dr. Bharani has mentioned, this is a neonatal severe hyperparathyroidism, which is basically because of a, a homozygous or a compound heterozygous mutation in the calcium sensing receptor. And what will you, how will you manage this case, Alapan? Uh, you have to go for the new... Uh... Near total so first you have to stabilize. Yeah. So you have to give hydration, give diuresis. You start them on uh, bisphosphonate maybe, maybe calcitonin, sinacalcid, all that. Bring the calcium levels down and then consider going for surgery. Now in the rare scenario, if you had found that only the father's level were high and mother's calcium was normal, what will you do? We'll uh, look for, uh, we'll wait and watch. So you will do the conservative measures and then try to see whether in the next month or so the calcium levels go down. Yeah. So next uh, seven-year-old girl child who has presented with abdominal pain and mother gives of history of frequent bed waiting. Initially, she was taken to a pediatrician for the view of a urinary tract infection and investigated thoroughly. But uh, Incidentally, we have found that uh, their serum calcium level was on the higher side, 14 milligram per DL with a high phosphorus level. So again, you have a high calcium and high phosphorus, which makes a PTH cause unlikely. As you said, the PTH is 3.4. It is, in a, a is appropriately suppressed. So what would be the next plan in this case? So a young child who is presenting to you with hypercalcemia, hyperphosphatemia and a suppressed PTH. Let's see what the audience, uh, the participants would like to answer on that. So vitamin D level, Dr. Pallari Raman, vitamin D excess, Dr. Shubha, vitamin D. So yes, this is a classical scenario of vitamin D excess in which you will actually develop nephrocalcinosis very quickly because if the calcium levels are high, there is no protective PTH to conserve the calcium and you will develop nephrocalcinosis quickly. Yeah. Yeah, so it's vitamin D toxicity. Again, a 12-year-old boy, he's a known case of cerebral palsy and has been bedridden for last six years. Uh, now, he has presented to us with abdominal pain and a history of constipation. His uh, calcium level was high, phosphorus is on the higher side and a low PTH so level. Again, a PTH independent form of hypercalcemia. The setting is very, very clear that you have an immobilized child whose muscle activity is less. The bone formation probably will be less. Now the questions would be what are the cause or what are the treatment in this scenario? So we'll solicit responses from people on that regards. So this is clearly a scenario of immobilization related vitamin D uh, in which your bone uh, resorption is uh, more and your bone formation is less. That's why you have hypercalcemia. 
and how will you treat this scenario uh, we'll try to give a uh, bisphosphonate uh, like so you can give a course of bisphosphonate which will not only improve the calcium will also have improvement in the bone health as well so that will be the scenario to look at this is because of immobilization. Now, a 10 year old boy who has history of weight loss and loss of appetite for the last six months and presented to us with features of abdominal pain, headache. On examination, we found he has a high blood pressure level, and investigation shows a high calcium level with high phosphorus level. With so, hypercalcemia with hyperphosphatemia, undetectable PTS. So, it's something else which is causing that. And you have given some clues about weight loss and loss in appetite. So, what will the possible causes people will look at? So, we have we have uh, considered for a CBNAT in this uh, child. So in this case, this ideally, you should look at the 25 OHD level yes. and then the calcitriol level. Your 25 OHD is normal and calcitriol is yes. high. You are looking at granulomatous disease. So, tuberculosis would be a possibility, possibility in this yes. setting. So, think of a granulomatous disease in that perspective. We'll see what the audience was thinking about in that. Okay, carry on. So again, a five-year-old boy who presented with fever for the last one month, followed by a two episodes of GTCS, which uh, his parents rushed to emergency. And uh, on examination, we found that uh, there was his there is presence of uh, large hepatosplenomegaly with various lymphadenopathy. Uh, it is a uh, contiguous lymphadenopathy in the cervical and axillary lesion, and also there is history of severe bone pain. We have done a calcium, it was showing high level along with a low PTH level. So I think this again is a giveaway. We have already discussed this scenario in which you have got hepatosplenomegaly and you have got a significant finding which is there in terms of the hypercalcemia and bone pain. So there will be a lytic lesion there and a malignancy will be a strong possibility in that setting. Now, a 12-year-old boy, again, presented with similar complaints of like hypertension and constipation. He has a calcium of high calcium level, 15 milligram almost, and a low phosphorus level with a high PTH level. So, what would be the next best? So, level? now you have a hypercalcemia with a low phosphorus and a high PTH, which basically means that it goes more in favor of a PTH-dependent cause. So, we have done a creatinine level. It was normal and a urinary calcium to creatinine level shows a high. So what are you thinking here, Dhani? Uh, so there is hypercalcemia, there is hyperparathyroidism and the urinary calcium is high. Yes, so uh, in this setting, we, we will have to look for family history of men's syndromes. Uh, so this is a primary hyperparathyroidism. So you have to think of all the genetic causes and other, other parameters to look for. So, there will be a parathyroid adenoma. The question is that you should suspect hypercalcemia in a child who is acutely sick, particularly if there is dehydration, constipation, abdominal pain, hypertension, get a calcium level done. If your calcium levels is high, always check PTH levels simultaneously. If your calcium is high and PTH is about 20, it is hyperparathyroidism. Start working in that regard. Look for urinary calcium to differentiate familial benign hypercalcemia from hyperparathyroidism. If your PTH level is under 20, look for vitamin D levels. If they are high, it's usually iatrogenic. If vitamin D is normal, look for calcitriol. That will indicate more towards the possibility of uh, a granulomatous disease or increased conversion. If both PTH, vitamin D and calcitriol, they are all normal, think of an increased bone resorption scenario like immobilization, hypophosphatasia, malignancy in that setting. So identification of hypercalcemia is very, very important. Uh, at this point of time, I'd like to thank all of you for patient hearing and all of you can go and have a look at our website, learning.society.in with validated courses related to pediatric endocrinology.